What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna replace this crummy plastic shelving unit with a nice new cabinet. Let's get into it. So for a second time, I've actually pre-planned something on this channel. Not that I don't pre-plan, but I pre-designed, I guess. Normally I kind of just build whatever comes to my mind and that usually results in a lot of waste of material. So for this project, I actually started by taking some measurements and then using those measurements to develop a model in Fusion 360. I know there's been a couple of you asking me if I can do a tutorial on Fusion 360. I'm not quite there yet, but Hopefully pretty soon I can help you guys out with that, little by little. So we're gonna build this entire cabinet carcass out of three quarter inch maple plywood. I didn't go with anything crazy that you buy at like a lumber yard or anything. I just went to the big box store. It's not the best quality, but for a shop cabinet, I think it'll be just fine. And it's better than the plastic shelf it's replacing. So to get started here, I'm gonna cut these 22 by 36 inch side panels and then move to cutting all of these smaller pieces. So if you haven't watched my last video yet, I added this Sentec dust separator to the bottom of my tool cart with a four horsepower shop vac and I used it throughout building this entire cabinet. And I have to say it kept the garage a lot neater and resulted in a lot less cleanup. I'll definitely remember to add a link in the description below if you're interested. So yesterday I spent way too much time trying to cut all these panels with the track saw. I didn't feel like breaking out the workbench with the table saw and everything, but that's the way to go. It's going to take way too long doing this with the track saw and it'll be less accurate. Obviously if you guys don't have a track saw or a table saw, you can definitely get away with just using a circular saw or even a hand saw I guess if you really want to try that, but I don't recommend that. Uh, at a minimum I would have a circular saw. So I'm gonna break out the table saw and get to cutting these panels and squaring up the ones I cut yesterday because there was one mistake on one of them. So one of the things that you might overlook when building something like this, especially when you're gonna be cutting all the parts before starting assembly, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you label everything so you don't end up picking up a part that you already cut to cut it into a smaller part or something like that. A few extra seconds with some painter's tape and a marker could save a trip to the lumber yard. So now you can kind of see that using the table saw is actually a lot more efficient and more accurate. When I was cutting all these stringers, I would have had to reset the track saw every time to make each cut. But for these, you could just simply run the stock board through multiple times and get all your stringers out in one shot. Definitely a big time saver over the track saw. So I have all the three quarter inch material cut. Uh, I ended up using a pine board for the drawers rather than using the plywood because I don't have enough plywood to make the drawer box and I didn't want to cut a whole sheet for a couple three inch wide pieces. So with that out of the way, I'm going to pull out some quarter inch material and get to cutting the drawer faces, the door faces and the back panel. So let's keep going with that. So one thing I did here was I decided to reference the model and mark out all of these quarter inch panels on the four by eight sheet of plywood. This was mainly just to minimize the amount of waste material left over and try and maximize what I could do with the leftover material. So most of the cabinet carcass pieces are now cut. I just have to make a series of dados before I can assemble the actual carcass itself to accept the quarter inch stock that's gonna make up the back panel. Basically a dado is just a fancy name for a groove that's gonna accept your material like this. So to do this, unfortunately my dado stack that I have only goes down to a quarter of an inch and this is slightly smaller than a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna have to use the regular table saw blade 
and then bump the fence a second time to get the actual thickness that I need. Hope that makes sense. So one thing that maybe you guys can avoid watching this video, if you're gonna use a router to cut your dados, I ended up referencing the first one that I did off of this flat side of the router. And then when you would tilt it to either side, it would actually move the router bit and make a not so straight line. So if you're gonna measure your offset for your router bit, measure it off one of the round faces. I know that seems pretty obvious now, but I thought it would have been easier just to measure right off this flat face. Any little deflection in the router actually makes it move quite a bit on your workpiece. I have all these dados cut and it's time to glue this thing together. So one thing I forgot to mention, I had to add pocket holes to all the horizontal pieces. And another thing, stringers are just these four inch wide strips that act as support for the inner portion of the cabinet and where the drawer will be mounted. So with all the pocket holes out of the way, I got to adding some glue to all the joints and started by screwing the outer frame of the cabinet together. After getting the outer frame partially assembled, I added the back quarter inch panel. I actually changed the design a little bit and had to cut a little bit off of what I initially accounted for, but that will be updated prior to uploading this video. I also added these 90 degree clamps just to help keep everything square while I got all the screws in. So now that the entire outside portion of the cabinet carcass was completed, it was time to add that middle shelf that's actually dadoed in. This took a little bit of persuasion with a mallet, probably because that router cut was a little bit crooked, but it ended up going in just fine. To finish off the carcass, I added the stringer at the base of the drawer, and just like that, we have a cabinet frame. Got the entire cabinet carcass Assembled. A couple tips that I could probably recommend is to use some of these spring clamps to hold your stringers in place while you get them all ready to be fully clamped and then screw them in. Just makes it easier. It's like an extra set of hands. But all in all, this went together perfectly just like the model. I did make one slight change to the base that I'm going to update the model before I post this video. All in all, it's coming out really good. So right now I'm going to work on building the draw box and then the face frame for this. So let's get to that. So to add a little strength to the drawer box, I wanted to use a rabbit joint. This probably wasn't necessary and you probably just could have pocket hold this together, but I wanted to do something a little bit differently. So similar to cutting the dado for the center shelf, you could use a dado stack or a router table, but because I only had two of these to do, I just decided to do it the same way on the table saw. I marked it out with a marking gauge to get the correct depth rabbit, and then just ran it through multiple times to get that rabbit cut out. So with those rabbits cut, I moved to gluing this together and I actually ended up countersinking a couple of screws just to make the box a little bit stronger because I plan to put some heavier tools in this. If I redid this project, I probably should have went with a thicker half inch plywood for the base of the drawer, but for how shallow it is, I think the quarter inch will be just fine. With that out of the way, I got to moving on to adding the face frame. Basically, the face frame just covers up the edge of your plywood and gives the cabinet a finished look. There's a bunch of different sizes you could actually make this, depending on the look that you want. So it's really up to you what look you like the most. You'll see later on in the video, it does affect what hinges you choose for your doors. But besides that, it doesn't really matter. For my face frame, I went with poplar because I plan on painting this cabinet in the future. And for those who don't know, poplar is a good wood for that. 
To secure this, I just used a combination of brad nails and some glue. And another thing that I could recommend if you're going to build something like this for yourself, I would recommend building this entire face frame and pocket screwing it all from the back to hold all the joints tight. Not a necessary step, but one that I think could improve the build quality. I wrapped up the face frame on the cabinet. Uh, it's time now to move to the doors and the drawer. I already cut all of the pieces to length, and now I have to move to cutting the groove portion to accept the quarter inch plywood panel that's gonna go on the inside of these doors, because they're gonna be like a shaker style. And then I can get to cutting the tongue on the end of each piece so that they fit together nicely and are nice and strong. I'm gonna get to doing that on the table saw, and we'll pick up when I'm done with that. So to make the groove to accept the quarter inch plywood, I just ran it through the table saw blade and bumped the fence over until I got to the desired width. All right, so I have all the grooves cut to accept the plywood, like I showed. So now I have to cut the tongue portion in the ends of the horizontal pieces so that when we put these together, these two pieces will overlap and make a nice strong joint that'll keep everything on the same plane. So for this, you could actually use a couple different things. You could use a router table or even a handheld router. Uh, you could also use a table saw with a dado stack. You could cut these by hand, or you could use a regular table saw blade and just work your way over. You will have a little bit of cleanup to do, but it shouldn't be an issue. And because I only have a couple of these to do, I'm just gonna do them with the regular table saw blade. Something I definitely want to mention, anytime you're working with pieces that you're cross-cutting like this, make sure you use a cross-cut sled or a miter gauge at the minimum because you could get into some really nasty situations with kickback if you just try to run these short pieces through the table saw. Something else you definitely want to do is make sure before gluing any of this stuff, you dry fit everything and make sure all the dimensions work out. I actually ended up making a mistake on the draw face and had to cut it down later on. So I know I'm dropping quite a bit of information, but another thing that'll make these gloves a lot less stressful is laying out your clamps prior to putting glue on any of the parts. The first door that I did, I started assembling it without the clamps on the bench and I ended up fumbling around with it before thinking to do it this way. This may seem like a pretty trivial tip, but honestly, you get caught up in the moment and make silly mistakes. So everything's all glued up. Uh, I added a couple extra clamps to hold these flat against the rails of the parallel clamps. I'm going to let these dry overnight, and then tomorrow I could get to mounting them, cutting the top, and finishing up this cabinet. Super happy with the way that this is coming out so far. So I hope it continues to go that way all the way to the end. All right, so it's two days later because I didn't get a chance to get back in here yesterday. The panels are all dry. They glued up really, really nice and I'm super happy with the way they came out. So now I'm going to get to mounting this to the front of the drawer box and the two doors to the front of the cabinet. Although any of the seams were pretty minimal, I did add a little bit of wood filler that I'll sand off later to get it ready for paint. I won't cover that in this video, but just figured I'd let you guys know. So unfortunately, I'm doing this for the first time and I'm not scared to admit that. The hinges that I bought are for a face frame style cabinet. So you can see there's two little tabs here that are meant to mount between the three quarter inch stock used for the face frame. And unfortunately, I don't have a big enough overlay here. I made this flush with the inside of the cabinet and basically made just an edge banding and these won't sit flush against the cabinet. It actually would have been a lot easier if I made this a little bit wider and I could have just used these because they self-index, but unfortunately I didn't do that. I'm gonna have to go to the store and get a different type of hinge that'll work for my application, but just keep note of that when you build your cabinet. All right, so now I have the right style hinges. You can see the difference here between the two. This one mounts flush with the inside of your cabinet and the other style has these little prongs that get in the way that are made for a face frame. So I'm gonna get to mounting these then we can move on to the drawer. So if you don't have one of these Craig jigs or a similar jig to drill your holes and recess for the hinges, a lot of the hinges do come with a little paper template 
But because I have this, it makes the process a lot quicker and more accurate. And if you're going to be doing a lot of these, something like this will be worth money. Now what you're left with is a perfect match that'll hold your hinges. So after getting all the pilot holes drilled and recesses drilled for the hinges, I mounted the actual hinges themselves and marked the inside of the cabinet. The marking on the inside of the cabinet was determined by the instructions included with the hinges. Thankfully, if these are slightly off, there is some adjustment so don't sweat it too much. Something you can do to make this mounting process a little bit easier is the cabinet portion of the hinge usually unclips from these. So you can go ahead and install the cabinet side and then clip the door on after the fact. Makes it a little bit easier than fumbling around with the door trying to get these screws in. Being that this was the first time I've installed hinges like these, I have to say, after doing the first side, the second side went much quicker. With the doors out of the way, it was time to move into the drawer slides. I was kind of nervous about these, and I ended up making a slight mistake. So unfortunately, somehow, I made this draw box slightly too big. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch too big. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, I'm gonna take an eighth inch off either side of the drawer sides, probably by running it through my table saw, and then I could start over and get these drawer sides mounted. So if that wasn't clear, you need to have, at least for these hinges, a half inch of clearance on both sides of your drawer box so that you have room to install the drawer slides. With the drawer box trimmed down, I took a couple measurements and similar to the hinges, I attached one side to the cabinet and one side to the drawer box. Then it was simple as clipping that drawer slide back in and testing it out. This did take a little bit of adjustment to get it right and working smoothly, but in the end it worked out okay. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I made the drawer face slightly too big and I actually had to trim it down a little bit. Not a big deal, but it was just an extra step. And because we used that quarter inch plywood on the back side of the drawer face, I added a filler panel so that when it was secured to the drawer box and you added your drawer pulls, you didn't end up bowing that quarter inch plywood in. To mount the face, I just added some screws from the back side and then got to cutting the top. I know I shared some errors in this video with you guys, so definitely let me know and give me some feedback if you like that or if you just want to see the finished product. I know for me, when I make a mistake, I always learn from it. And if you guys can learn from it by just watching this video, maybe it'll save you some time and money. To mount the top, I just placed some screws from the underside up into the melamine so that this can be removable at a later date if it gets damaged and then got to cutting some edge banding to cover up that melamine edge. Lastly, I added these tiny little caster wheels to the bottom of the cabinet so I can move it around and added the knobs to the drawer and the doors. So, what do you guys think? I'm super happy with the way that this came out. I ended up adding a melamine top similar to my table saw workbench and used the same oak edge banding to give this thing a more durable finish. There was definitely some learning experiences along the way, and I hope you guys learned something from this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.